Welcome to Inspirational Journeys, everyone. My name is Ann Harrison, and today my special guest is Heather Carter. And how I got connected with her was through her interview on Where Did You See God, um, the podcast that Paul Granger did. Because if you remember, he's been on the show before. And so I started listening to his podcast, and that's how I got connected with Heather. So welcome to the show, Heather. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to talk to you. I've been looking forward to it. Oh, yeah, me too. Thank you. So why don't you start by introducing yourself to the listeners? Okay, well, like you said, my name's Heather Carter. I um, currently live in Springfield, Illinois, but I'm originally from the West Coast. So I still try to claim that as my home, although it's starting to bleed over into Midwest living versus West Coast. Living. <laughs> I don't know, I have to move pretty soon or something. Um, but I am married to my high school sweetheart. Uh, actually in high school, we didn't date, but at the very end of high school, we st started dating and then he went to college. We were in California at the time. He went to college in Joplin, Missouri, and I followed him there. Luckily it worked out. So we have three great kids that are 26, 22 and 21. And, um, my husband was in the ministry for 25 years or so, and now works in the private sector, but now it's uh, kind of my turn to do the ministry of uh, at least more public ministry. We all do that all the time, but um, uh, I just let's see. And so we can talk more about um, my books and how those came about through some crazy life circumstances, but I'll kind of turn it back to you and let you take it where you want us to go. All right. So what inspired you? to, I know you say you're not a writer, but I still ask this because you're an author. What inspired you to become a writer? Well, in 2015, I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia and uh, I ended up in the hospital for 35 days. Um, that was my first stint in the hospital. And then I was in another 40 days after that, um, about once a month for seven months. And when I first got in the hospital, there were so many people asking questions because it's very, it was very abrupt. I got blood work done that morning. And by five o'clock that night, I was in the hospital for 35 days. And uh, so we started a blog to help people, to update people on the status of my cancer. And that kind of morphed, I would write it, but then it morphed into just more of the status of my soul and about what was going on around me uh, what kinds of, where did I, where did I see God around me and uh, things I needed to focus on and work on in myself. And I just started writing about them. And so my first book is 120 blogs I wrote during that seven month cancer journey. And they're not about cancer. They're about just the common plagues of the heart, like that we all have like worry, fear, resentment, comparison, uh, all mm -hmm. that, just to name a few. So um, uh, my first book is the first 120. My second book is the next chunk of 120. And then we'll see about the third book. Oh, wow. That's yeah. I mean, that's amazing that you, you went through that and you wrote all those different blogs and things. So, and I loved how you did the, um, what was it? The special ed preschool lessons. Uh huh. <laughs> I love those. Yes. I, those are my favorite ones. The, le the life lessons. Yeah. I love yeah. those. Um, so <clears throat> So how did you compile, did you have help with um, compiling, compiling them into, in like by, by date? Did you just pull them off the website and start formatting a new book? How did that, how did that work? Yeah, yeah actually the first ones are all dated because um, I pulled them directly from my website, uh, the, the blog post, the WordPress site that I had started writing them on. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I tried to keep the dates the same because a lot of them, I refer back to a previous post and it just made sense with my leukemia journey to keep it chronological. Mm -hmm. In my second book, I kind of went around and around and around about if I should make it be by topic or, and I had planned to do that, just make a topic book about all the different things I, I write about. But then I started thinking, wait a second, I don't write about these things because I'm an expert in any of them. And I'm going to sound like a maniac if I start putting them into cat into chapters of, of topics. So I decided that the first book that I did went well and it was chronological. So I didn't date the second book, but I, they are all 
written chronologically. So sometimes I kind of even warn the reader, sometimes the solution or conclusion I have by blog 100 is different from the conclusion that I came up with in blog seven, because life happens and you learn and grow and stretch and realize things that you used to think worked don't work anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of a progression of my thoughts and my craziness, I guess. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so are you work? you said you were, are you planning on working on a third book or? I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I probably have maybe 60 or 70 posts that are not in a book that are on my website right now. The nice thing about my site, I love it. A friend of mine um, that's brilliant in that area set it up for me because I am not a techie person. And we were able to have all the blogs be um, categorized so that if you go there and browse by topic, you can click on resentment, for example, and you can read everything I've ever written about resentment. Uh, so uh, there's about 30 or, or more categories in there. Resentment, fear, worry, anxiety, um, hope, healing, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, the next book would just, I would probably pick up, you know, from the end of where I ended my second book and, um, do the next 120 they're all about 120 posts in each book oh okay they're really designed to be read not in one sitting or not over a weekend but just to read one a day it's it's really like a, di a daily reader kind of book oh okay yeah I, I i think i spread it over like four days I read two or three a day and yeah and then that last and then last night i kind of finished it off because i, I was like i've got to get this finished for today but i noticed <laughs> there was one and i don't know if that was a typo Hold on. who knows right. that's always your greatest fear when you reread your book it's like oh gosh there's no a i saw that. something that said uh, you were doing 2015 and i saw some that one that jumped to 2017 was that with, uh, in September. I don't remember what date it was right now, but. Oh, uh, you know, it might've been, I don't know. Well, I did um, in 2015 in February is when I started writing. So it should have been pretty chronological. Some might have been um, taken out because if they were just an update on my status, I took those out. So oh, okay, yeah. A good question. I do not know. <laughs> okay, because I saw that. And I'm like, wait a minute. Is that supposed to be that way? <laughs> yeah, probably not. The first book I did um, through Amazon, mm -hmm. and it was um, I self published, but they were very helpful, but not always as helpful in catching things like that. They had an editor, but I don't know how good it was or not. But um, in my second book, I did hire an actual publisher to help me, and, and an editor to comb through it a little more thoroughly so oh okay that's cool so and i noticed um there were times when you were talking about your leukemia journey you'd be wanting to go to like say you had plans to go to walmart and then you get the blood work and you'd have to stay home for two weeks was that because your immune system was really low mm -hmm. if with uh leukemia you go neutropenic after you've been out of the hospital for a couple of days and uh the that just meant that you were you could catch anything so i couldn't go out of my house i couldn't have people in my house it was it was weird because it reminded me when i was during COVID, it really kind of gave me flashbacks of that time because i felt actually fine i just my count my blood counts would tell me that i would could catch anything i had no immune system so it meant i couldn't have friends over i couldn't go to the store no one could come even clean my house because it could stir up dust and that could give me an infection. So it was very isolating, but I felt totally fine, kind of like with COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if you didn't have COVID, you still couldn't go out or be with people, but it's hard to, to know that there's a disease that can kill you when you feel fine. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I was just curious about that because I know you, you didn't talk mm -hmm. about leukemia per se, but you used it to um, share the life lessons you learned. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I'm not going to say I get an, I, I can imagine it. I mean, I had an aunt that had leukemia and she survived, mm -hmm. but I kind of got an idea of, of some of, you know, just a glimpse. And I like that because it, it wasn't like a technical thing. And so um, what was some of the biggest takeaways you learned through that process? 
Gosh, there were a lot. I think the overarching thing that I felt like God was teaching me was to focus on myself, not in a selfish way, but in a way that, you know, my book's called Soul Selfie. And I really sensed while I was in the hospital that God in kind of certain, a certain way told me that to flip that camera, like on your iPhone, back around on yourself and take a picture of your, what's going on in you instead of, and mind your own business instead of minding everyone else's business and either judging their behavior or trying to imitate it. And just realizing that I was a full-time job. My sister-in-law said it, I thought really well. She said, it's like God used cancer to root out a cancer in you that has nothing to do with cancer. And that's, that's probably my biggest takeaway is that I had to go to work on myself and then use what I learned through the drama, the trauma and minutia of everyday life, since that's you know, 80% of what we deal with is standing in line at the grocery store, or sitting in line at the bank and all those kinds of things. How do we use these circumstances of everyday life even to inspire and encourage others and to um, keep our eyes on him as the one in control and not try to take that control back? Oh, okay. Um, so I noticed you talked about addiction and recovery. Do you want to share that story? Um, yeah, I have, I just have several, um, people in my circles that struggle with addiction and, you know, that was kind of going on at the same time as my cancer. And so I see a lot of similarities in that disease, uh, that plagues, that uh, plagues certain people, but it also reminded me that we're all sick with something and to, it would do us well, I guess, to be, to treat people like they have cancer or like instead of thinking of it as they're just terrible people or they're doing bad things or they're behaving badly to try to get beneath that and realize people have some pretty serious struggles with mental health or like you said, addiction uh, or even just relationships, you know, that maybe their marriage is struggling or their kids are not speaking to them or in or hurting themselves people are going through a lot and then they're trying to go to the grocery store and sometimes people get grouchy and we take it personal. You know, I keep, I, one of my things I say a lot is try not to take things personal that have nothing to do with us. Right. Like the squirrel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was the my classic one. Good job. The <laughs> squirrel, the squirrel not playing in your tree. <laughs> yes. I know I sit in front of this big picture window every morning. And when I write, I'm always in that same spot. And there was mm -hmm. these squirrels playing in a tree across the street. And I was like, hey, those squirrels are usually in my tree. Why are they not in my tree? What's wrong with my tree? I mean, come on, you know? And that, that is, it's that reminder of like, probably they're not thinking about that they don't want to play in my tree. They're just doing what squirrels do, which is playing wherever the heck they want. And I was taking something personal that had nothing to do with me. And I do that with people too. <laughs> I had to laugh at that one. It's like, uh, the squirrels just do what they do. <laughs> Here's what tree they play in their, their job. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. So, and I was gonna, and I usually ask about writing process, but basically, from what I what I could see when reading your book, your process is just writing your blogs and then putting them together, <laughs> right? Absolutely. And although it's very specific, even though it wasn't intentional, um, I usually do sit at the same spot on my couch when I write, and um, but I can force myself to focus and do it other places if I'm out of town. But otherwise, I sit in my living room. I have my my little iPad. I don't think I have it with me, but I have an iPad with a keyboard on it that someone that my mom bought me when I was in the hospital and that my friend bought me a keyboard. So I always write on that exact thing because my fingers just fly over the keys. I can't even uh -huh. write anymore because my brain's going so fast. I can't write fast enough to keep up with my thoughts. So I use do that. And then I also sometimes I have a blog idea that rolls around in my head for a while. I call it being backlogged. You know, I've got mm -hmm. like three that I want to write, but sometimes I, even if I think that's what I'm supposed to write about that day, I try to ask myself what I'm struggling with at that time. Cause sometimes I'm trying to figure out what to write. And then I realize, you know, you've really been struggling this week about comparing yourself to people around you. Then I realize that's what I'm supposed to write about. And I sit down and write it in probably 
under an hour for sure, sometimes 30 to 40 minutes. I sit and write the whole thing and then I go back and edit for um, you know, spelling errors and such, and then mm -hmm. I post it. I don't rethink it or try to move stuff around because that does not go well. It just comes out of me and then that's that. And if it, if I try to, I'll sometimes I try to edit it and move stuff around and then I realize I already set it up here. Like it comes out of me how it's supposed to come out of me. And that's, I try mm -hmm. to leave it at that. So it's a pretty specific, but um, tried and true process for me, but I didn't intend to do it that way. This is how God worked it out. Yeah. Um, and I noticed, um, so there's where your, your public transparency comes into it. It felt like I was reading a journal, a public journal. Mm -hmm. Good. I don't know yeah. if that was what you intended it for, but yeah, I mean, it really is. It's my journal where I'm talking to God. I'm kind of talking to myself. I'm, but by the end, I'm always talking to you. Right. You know, I, it just, I can't do it. I try to journal just to God. And by the end, I've written a blog. I was like, <laughs> you stop doing that. But it's always how it starts. So. That's what God wants, you know? Yeah. We, and, yeah. and, 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 and you, you got to get, get those brain dumps out and then they end up turning into something even bigger. Mm -hmm. Um, so do you have any like writing advice or blogging advice or any tips or takeaways you want to leave with the listeners today? Uh, I think that, you know, I would not consider myself a real, like I said, a real writer in that, in the sense that I never thought, oh, you know what, I should write a book, or I have a lot to say, I should write a book. That did not, yeah. uh, I'm not an expert in any of the things I write about, they're just things that are happening to me. So if you're somebody who feels like they, you know, you might have something like that to say, or you might be an expert on something, but just writing a little bit every day for me anyway, is the best way, was the best thing to do. Because if someone said you need to turn in a whole chapter next week, I don't think I could do it. But if I just think I just, all I have to do is one day at a time, one blog at a time, I can do that. And so that's one thing is just, you know, get started to write something a little every day. But the other thing is, is that, um, reminding yourself that if you have a story to if you have a story to tell even if it's not a pretty one people out there need to hear your story uh, I've been thinking about this idea of story so much and I think it's kind of the new probably the new trend that you hear out there lately is everyone is talking about their story and how important it is and you mm -hmm. might be scared to tell it or maybe you don't want to retell it because you think it's bad but the reality is you need to tell it and we need you to tell it because that's going to help somebody else who might be going through something similar. I always say you go through what you go through so you can help others get through what you went through. And that's how you redeem all that stuff is you use it. You go first, you share your heart and let somebody else feel encouraged by what you have already had to struggle with. Wow. I love that. And um, even as a writer myself, I, I, I love that because sometimes you have to write that, that, it, that whole, you know, you have to go through it so you can share it. Mm -hmm. And I always say stories matter. Yes. You, you, your story matters. So um, where can people find you online? So the best place probably is going to my website, which is just heathercarterwrites.com. R W R I T E S Heather Carter writes.com. Cause that's my, uh, we'll have all my blogs posted on there has some videos. Um, I do have a podcast that I just started with a friend of mine. Who's also an author that, um, I Ooh. love doing, um, he'd be great to, for you to talk to his name is Bruce Pulver. And he wrote a book called above the chatter, our words matter. And he just talks about the power of words. And so he and I have started a podcast that we just dialogue for 20 minutes or so about one word. So we've done like noteworthy whole, what do we do? Like um, nowhere. We've done a three-part series on expectations. We've done one on comparison and change and contentment. So those kinds of topics. And then we just unpack them every, they come out every single Tuesday. So you can find that on Spotify or uh, Anchor or any place where they have. I use Anchor too. I'm going to yeah. be honest. 
Yeah. Shout out to Anchor. <laughs> hey, I know that I do love Anchor. So I that's usually think. where I post it and then it goes on Spotify as well. Um, is it on any other platforms? Uh, those are the main two I know of, but I'm sure anywhere I, I post it on Anchor and then they shoot it out, you know, to a lot of other places. Okay. What's the name of it in case somebody's it's looking called, for it? Um, called Can I Have a Word With You? Okay. I will definitely look at that. Yeah. Um, but do have um, Bruce contact me because yeah. that would be awesome um and then you guys I, I write poetry and I write fiction but you know if there's something you know you guys want to talk to me about I'm sure yeah yeah so far we haven't had any guests because we're just unpacking this word and we both have written so much about it so we're talking about that in the future but for right now we just dialogue about it and it's a video but also you know just audio if someone wants it like that um and then I also was going to say I'm I am writing a book and collecting stories right now for people who have been through cancer or are currently struggling with it. Um, it's called Embracing the Impact of Cancer. And anyone who participates um, gets 3,000 words to write their story to that. So that it's kind of like a book. If someone told you they had cancer, you could say, oh, here's a book, read these stories about you know, to encourage you as you're going through this. So if you know of anyone, if any of the listeners um, are interested in that, they can just email me at heathercartersoulselfie at gmail.com. And that's on my website. So they can go there and find all that information. Okay. So um, now, and I usually ask this, do you have a Bible verse you'd like to share? You know, I think that my my one of my favorite ones is um and in fact i just used it this morning i got to figure out the exact um reference that's gonna be bad i can't do that um it's in second corinthians i believe and it's um where it says you know praise be to the god of all comfort who comforts us in all our affliction so that we in turn can comfort others with the same comfort that we have received from god and that's kind of my life verse because it, it, it encapsulates what I said earlier in a different way, which is we go through what we go through so we can help others get through what we went through. That you have been given an opportunity to learn and grow through a difficult situation so that you can use what you learn to help someone else and share that comfort and that strength your experience, your strength, and your hope with other people who are going through the same. So I'm sorry, I can't give you the exact verse, but I think it's 2 Corinthians. <laughs> I'll have to look it up, but um, I can say it. I just don't know where it is. Exactly. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. So would you like to close us out in prayer? Sure, I'd love to. God, thank you uh, for this opportunity to share your hope and the strength that you've given me through some really tough situations in my life. I know that we all go through these things and um, I am grateful beyond words that you have given me peace in my heart and comfort when I need it. Help me to continue to turn things over to you so that I get out of the way and stop trying to be in control and trust that you have a plan and you love me and I can trust you. Thank you for Ann and her ministry and the people that she touches and for her heart and listening to your spirit. And then we ask that you will bless her ministry and continue to grow it and uh, just give her words, whispers of what she needs to write about next. And we thank you. I just thank you for this chance to meet new people and to um, be connected. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. So we challenge you today to go out there and read to get inspired, write something inspiring, and share your creation with the world. For when you've touched one life, you've touched thousands. Thanks for joining us on Inspirational Journeys. And remember, your story matters.